Hey guys, this is Yanis Papadopoulos, lead guitar for Scott Stapp, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And I'm Chris. <laughs> I am so sorry you all have to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Today we've got... Giannis, I'm going to go go for it. Giannis Papadopoulos. Right on. That? Good job. And uh, yeah, good job. He's right now he's uh, playing with Scott Stapp, uh, former Creed vocalist. And great he's singer. got quite a great singer. And he's got quite a history of doing other stuff. And we're going to go ahead and get him online and see what happens. Right on. All right. Hey, Giannis. Is, is, how am I saying it? Am I, is that right, Giannis? It's, it's perfect, man. It's perfect. All right, right Giannis. On. Giannis, meet my partner, Chris. Chris, Giannis. Hello. Hello, Chris. Nice to meet you, man. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, brother. How are you doing today? Pretty good, man. I mean, we just uh, arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are playing uh, a show today at Bogart's. I'm pretty excited about it. And, uh, you know, setting up. We have a sound check in a couple of hours. And uh, then relaxing, warming up, getting ready for the show. Just one more day on the road, man. Same thing, you know. <laughs> it's <Yeah. on> repeat. <laughs> it's been on repeat for the past, I don't know, three and a half months. So it's like, yeah, that's an everyday situation, you know. It's yeah. your, has, uh, it, life. has the tour been going well, though? Dude, thank God everything is working great. Uh, we had the new album come out, uh, the new Scott Step album, The Space Between the Shadows, uh, came out, I think, on July 19th. Yeah. And uh, the crowd has been very uh, excited about it. Even before the official album release, uh, they knew the, the, uh, the single, Purpose for Pain. Uh, they were coming out, they were rocking with the new songs, and as soon as the album came out, man, they come, they know the lyrics, uh, they are having fun, and uh, that's the best thing, you know, when you're going live, you're going on stage, you need that energy, you know, you need that energy, it feeds you uh, from the artistic side, um, and it keeps you motivated to go, uh, to give more on stage, and uh, to want to perform more and more, you know, and uh, it's, it's a great interaction with the audience. And he's got a really loyal fan base. I mean, you know, from the Creed days for sure, but even from his solo stuff, I think, right? Right, man. I mean, you know what's funny? People, of course, uh, he became big uh, through the band, Scott. But uh, there are so many people in the social media who get so many requests like, hey, man, put this song from the first album, put the other song from the second album. And uh, if, you, if you hear the albums, you'll be like, Hey man, this dude has great songs, man. He has great songs. He got it. It's not, uh, you know, there's uh, quite a few people. There are quite a few people out there that are like, okay, uh, Scott has been uh, writing the songs from uh, for Creed, uh, all their lyrics and melodies and stuff. And right w when you see what he can do on his own, man, it's impressive. I mean, the new album is big. It's heavy, it's rocking. The vocals, and in my opinion, Scott sounds better than he has ever sounded. Uh, he's in shape. You can, you can see it when you see him live. You can hear it even in his voice. I can. Uh, right. It reflects uh, on his voice. And uh, uh, also, the lyrics are always meaningful. The melodies are powerful. And dude, again, this is a rocking album. So I, I, I actually listened to Purpose for Pain before we came uh -huh. on, uh -huh. and I was, I was blown away by the quality of the vocal. Bro, I'm telling you, if you come to the live show, you're yeah. going to be amazed with uh, how this guy performs, man. He still got it. And in my opinion, this is his prime time, man. In my opinion. If you see him live, you will understand what I'm talking about. He performs, dude. He goes out there. He, he sings like, it doesn't matter if it's, I don't know, 1,000 people or 5,000 people or 50,000 people. He performs because he respects the fans, you know. There's never a chance that he'd be like, hey, man, I'm tired today. I'm not going to do it or anything like that. He goes out there. It's him and the band, actually. We, we are going out. It's a good team. And uh, if, if you read comments online, this is something that 
passes through the audience and people uh, write about it quite a lot, actually. We have a good vibe, man. We have been together as a band for four and a half years, five years. Oh, wow. And yeah, the same people. And, more, you know, we are having fun. It's not always... Uh, what you can do on stage, it's a very important thing. What happens when the lights, you know, go down and you have to, I don't know, live with these people for, I don't know, 100 days? Yeah. <laughs> right, <You know>? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously, if you think about it, I mean, the stage time is what? One hour and a half, two hours of a day? The rest of the day, you live with these people. It's like a second family, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Uh, it's very, very important to get along and have fun. And we are laughing, man. We are having fun. You can see the smiles on stage. You can see the same smiles below the stage. And uh, it's fantastic. I'm telling you that. So did you play guitars on the album? Like you said, you've been a band forever, but a lot of times like a solo musician will, you know, kind of have a live band and studio musicians... Right. Uh, no, we are the band. Uh, actually, we are writing with Scott uh, very, very, very often. Nice. And uh, we, we've been writing throughout the, uh, the the past years, I mean, that we've been together. So, for example, we wake up one day and Scott might be like, hey, man, I got this melody in my head. It goes something like this. La, da, 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 da. And then, you know, I might be like, hey, man, I think that this is a cool riff that I wrote down the other day. Maybe that will be okay with that and we stopped building songs the other day man which we were just outside the venue it was the sun was shining you know we're just relaxing we just wrote a freaking good song freaking wow. good song i'm excited and nice. uh for example we are working also during the sound checks so again somebody might come with a rear for while we're jamming in sound check, maybe we come out with an idea that usually leads to a song. And uh, again, that shows the chemistry between the band and Scott. Oh, yeah. I, I just thought the guitar tone on Purpose for Pain was epic. <laughs> like, what an epic tone you got there. <laughs> yeah, the, the, guys did, uh, the guys did a great job at the studio, the production. Uh, we were very happy with uh, the result, you know. Yeah, I mean... What if I I kind of get geeky sometimes? What kind of guitar were you playing? What pickups were in your guitar? Like what was? Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting geeky, bro. <laughs> Sorry, he's a nerd. Sorry about that. No, no, no. That that's good. Uh, so, are you a guitar player yourself? I'm a recording engineer. Recording engineer. There yeah. you go. So, uh, I think it was. Uh, an ESP used in that one. I can't tell you about pickups and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was an ESP. Generally speaking, uh, I've been a PRS guy actually for uh, for many years and still am. Um, nice. This is you, you know. I'm pretty sure you know yourself. You know different different guitars, different uh, tones, different needs, oh <laughs> different situations, God. different I scenarios. <laughs> so you might have, for example, one guitar. I don't know, you might need a Gibson to record your rhythms. You might need a Tele to record your uh, clean tone. So uh, that's, it, it's a, usually, it's a big, it depends. We use a variety of uh, instruments in the studio. I understand. And, um, and the tone, actually, when we go live, uh, we have settled for the past a couple of years with uh, Fractal Audio. Oh, nice, uh, the Axe Effects. Yeah, yes, exactly. So currently I'm using the... Uh, XFX uh, 2XL Plus. Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I like the tone of that thing, man. The guys over at Fractal, they know what they're doing. And um, yeah, I've been using it in the studio. I've been using it also live uh, to an extent which I don't even remember <laughs> the last time I used <laughs> some of my tube amps. But especially in the tours, man, they're so convenient when you go, especially overseas. It, back in the days, we had to carry all these pedal boards and all the guitar heads and amps and cabinets. But right now, you can just put everything in a suitcase and go and play. Isn't and, that amazing? Uh, <laughs> dude, it's what technology can do, right? Uh, and you gain the consistency. I mean, from uh, our, our sound guys, I mean, pretty happy. He can get the same guitar tone every night without uh, stressing too much about the mics or the room. I mean, it affects it, but... Uh, not as it did with the amps and the cabs. Well, I mean, a tube right. amp can be a different sound every day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Say that again. Yeah, yeah def definitely. Plus, I mean, it, uh, 
it it get it gets affected by the surrounding by I don't know the voltage you have all these crazy sounds that might come out you know you yeah. need the noise gate no noise gate anyhow let's not be too geeky <laughs> no, Chris is a geek <laughs> no that that's good I myself uh, like these things you know but over the course of the years you know when you had all this things happening you know and uh might go down when you have a nap you're like hey man you know i'm okay with the digital you know oh yeah it's it's it's, it's pretty good it's pretty good i'm, I'm good you and the can't... convenience is so much easier oh man and the peace of mind that you get it, you can't buy that man you you can't buy that happiness and relaxation <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah no money can buy that yeah absolutely. i'm telling you yeah go ahead bruce all right, so I, I know Shauna sent me over the, the bio, and one of the things that caught my attention is, I'm probably going to butcher this, but it's the Orchestra Camerata, is that right? Right. Uh, so, so did you actually play with John Lord? No, 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 I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, what happened there is uh, suddenly I get uh, an email one day saying like, hey man, uh, so I'm uh, the guy that uh, runs the orchestra, and uh, we want to go out and play uh the concerto for group and orchestra uh it's uh i don't know if you're familiar with uh the thing it's uh it's uh, music that john lord wrote uh and they performed with uh, deep purple and uh different orchestras around the years and um so he's like we're going to do that so it's uh it's a band and then the orchestra together so i was the uh the guitar player of the band uh for that performance actually that was one of the best nights of my life. I'll tell you that, man. I'll tell you that. And uh, I mean, I come from, uh, I, I like rock. I'm a rock guitar player, obviously. Right. And But uh, my background is classical music. I've done all this classical training and stuff. So I was very, very excited with uh, to perform that on stage and have this uh, blend between the instruments and the fact that uh, the piece itself has some parts which are uh, improvised totally improvised by the musicians it's fantastic i mean you can check out what steve morse did what richie blackmore did and uh, it's 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 unique every every player that uh plays this um music that does it differently so it was uh, a very beautiful challenge to be on stage and perform and it was a big crowd man i'll tell you that it was a big crowd excellent night excellent it, night it was only a one show kind of thing Yes, it was one show. Actually, uh, there are many thoughts of uh, doing something like a small tour with it. But uh, the guy that runs the uh, the orchestra, the conductor, uh, George Petru, uh, he is very busy, very, very busy. And uh, I myself have been on tour for, uh, as I told you, three and a half months now, going to right. four. Then we have another tour to follow. So we're like... Our schedules don't uh, work very well together at the moment, but uh, we are definitely open in uh, repeating that. And uh, not only in Greece, obviously, we're thinking about going uh, around to Europe too, but again, uh, God needs to help with uh, <laughs> the schedules <laughs> because <laughs> the they're busy. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, it can't happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so when does this leg of the tour end and when does the next one start? Uh, so I left home... Uh, June 8th, I'm going home October 8th, and uh, we're going to be home for 22 days. Then yeah. we leave again November 1st, and uh, we go home November 22nd. So uh, In time for the holidays. Yeah, exactly. Then we're going to relax a bit, and then uh, new plans to go out again. But uh, in November, we are excited. So far, this uh, leg has mainly been in the uh, States. So we've been uh, all around West Coast, East Coast, South, North, uh, etc. But uh, in November, we're going to Brazil and Mexico. And uh, there's a huge Scott Stapp fan base down there. Uh, and we are pretty, pretty, pretty excited about it, actually. It's going to be very big shows, crowded. Uh, the social media have been, man, going crazy since we announced it because they've been asking for it. With, last time we've been in Brazil was, uh, I think, 2016. Oh, wow. Or so, I think. And, uh, dude, it's, yeah, it's going to be a blast. I'll tell you that. I can't wait Braz for it. Brazil and most of those South American countries are usually pretty rabid for hard rock and metal, I think, aren't they? 
Yeah, man. I mean, not only them in Europe in general. Uh, I think it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's more ener energetic, maybe. I mean, you, you go and uh, you see fans, you know, they hit bangs, they're acting like there's no tomorrow, you know. They, they right. want to feel it to the core. And uh, I'm like that as a guy, as a fan, actually. When I go to, uh, to shows, I don't want to sit in the back and listen to the music. I want to go in the front and feel it, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you see these kinds of uh, fans in, in Europe. I mean, even in the States, but uh, especially in South America and Europe, I think uh, the guys are more uh, open about it. They're more expressive. More and loud as a, sometimes. As a performer, though, that's got to make you feel. I mean, that's got you feed off that kind of energy, right? The, the more into it they get, the better the show, or the more oh, energy you get. Oh, definitely, man. I mean, uh, don't get me mistaken. If if you are a pro, you are going to perform no matter what. Even if you have one person down looking at you, or right. if you have twenty thousand people, you're going to perform. Uh, if you're asking me how it feels uh, inside. Uh, Obviously, the more energy you get, the more energy you feel you have to give and uh, you can give. So, yes, bigger, the bigger the audience, the more, let's say, we feel the same. I, the, we've had shows where, uh, you know, I don't think anybody can understand how we feel because we perform every night the same thing, man. Right. Sometimes you might, we might scream louder. <laughs> on our end like hey man come on <laughs> right you know these things but uh what you see on stage we are pretty dialed in and uh again that has to do with also the chemistry because if we were not having fun on stage i've been in these scenarios i, I mean everybody has been in works where uh workplaces where he didn't like it and you you can't work man you you right. can't perform it's it's like that this is not one of these scenarios. This is the opposite, man. You go on stage and you laugh. You're having fun. So if we're having fun, I think the the people that have uh, have a good time at the shows, man. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was very good. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. I hope we weren't too bad. No, all, all good. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I wish you all the best, guys. All the best. Hey, you too. Good luck with the tour, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a nice we'll day. Right. Right Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Nice guy. Really nice guy. So positive. Yeah. I was just like... Yeah, I liked it. I was just feeling the positivity, man. That was a good interview. I like that one. Super nice guy. Let's tie it up. Okay. Hey, thanks for listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Go ahead and check out Scott Stapp's new record. Um, he's on the road. You can check him out live. And, and Do I'm so... Not I, I'm pretty sure that's the most positive podcast we've ever had. I think so. It was he was very, very positive. It was great. I could feel sunshine flowing through the Skype, so that's <laughs> always a good sign. <laughs> sunshine is always good, even though we're we're dark and black and and metal as fuck, but uh, sunshine <laughs> sunshine is always good as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks All right. for checking us out. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Hello out there. Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nim But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you.